What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Lane and I'm a nurse, a nurse practitioner student. And in this video guys, we are talking about not really one of my favorite subjects to be quite honest with you, but I had got plenty of video requests about this. So we are going to do this guys. I'm going to give you my best tips for surviving patho and pharmacology in nurse practitioner school because somehow I made it through guys and I did and I have I do have some tips and some takeaways some lessons learned so I'm gonna share them with you guys in this video and hopefully this can help your semester go a little bit easier So before we even get into this, I'm going to let you know that patho was actually my jam. Like I actually love advanced pathophysiology. Um, I find it super interesting to kind of get to the why the body does this and like what makes it do this. Um, so I just preface this video by saying that path patho in undergrad and, and in graduate school came a little bit more naturally to me. Not saying I didn't have to study, I had to study a ton, but like I actually enjoyed the content a little bit more. Um, pharmacology, no, no, baby. Like this was not, <laughs> this was really a struggle for me because it was just a lot of rote mem memorization. Um, so I think I have more tips in this video about pharmacology just because that was one I had to really work my study strategies like to be able to pass. But I do have some tips for patho as well. But I just wanted to share that with you guys to let you know that <laughs> that patho I might have less just because I, I it, it wasn't as much of a struggle for me. But also at the same time, it's going to depend on your school because some schools patho versus farm might be easier or harder. Some schools want you to be a darn pharmacist by the time you pass the class. So it's going to vary depending on what school you're in. So I hope that this somehow like helps helps your semester get better by even a degree. All right. Something that I think is really relevant to both of the classes um, is study groups. And I had a study group for both patho and pharmacology. I actually took them both at the same time. Um, so I had a study group that I had just typed into. Uh, we used like a platform called Blackboard, um, an online platform where you can see classes and assignments and such. And so I had just posted on to a discussion board post saying like, hey, does anyone need a study group or want to form a study group for um, these classes? And I got some responses back. I'm so glad that I did that because I was able to meet new people um, who I've stayed in touch with throughout my program is just extra resources. Um, but yeah, so we started to make a study group. And I think some things about study groups that are great is the fact that you have a little group that you can kind of vent to, you can ask questions to, you can clarify things. But something else that you can do with study groups is also like break up chapter readings and have certain people maybe take notes on certain things. Um, I used that a little bit less in patho. Patho, I used it, used the study groups as more of like clarifying, does anyone understand this concept? I'm so confused about this. We would share maybe different videos with each other about tough subjects. Um, when it came to pharmacology though, I felt like the study group was even more helpful because there were so many medications that we needed to memorize. Um, so something that we did was we actually like broke down um, the chapters um, and at, at least we tried to do this initially where, um, you know, one person would take certain meds or a certain chapter for that week and try to write notes and share it in a Google Doc so that everybody else could kind of see it. Um, and I feel like we didn't even do the most efficient job at doing this. But if you're able to find a study group where you guys can break that up, it kind of it helps with some of the burden of um, all of the readings and all of the, the memorization that you have to do because somebody's kind of already read through it and made some notes. I will say that with this, you really need to trust the people in your group. Um, because not everybody's personality type can really withstand that. If you're someone who's like, yeah, I don't really trust that that person took all the notes that I would have taken, then it kind of undoes some of the time saving because you're probably going to go back and kind of be questioning what that person did anyway. Um, so that kind of works if you have a study group of people that you know and trust and you or you're willing to just put take a leap of faith um, and trust that that person actually put everything in there. But 
If you're able to utilize a study group, it can save you a lot of time. And honestly, just the emotional support was really helpful because it was a very stressful time and it's good to have people to vent to. I also used a lot of online resources when it came to patho and advanced pharmacology. Um, so for patho, I relied a little bit more heavily on Khan Academy, which I've shared in a few of my other videos, but that really helped me to kind of get a review of different systems um, and how the body responds in to different things. Um, and Khan Academy has so much. Uh, most of what I saw was on YouTube and it was all for free when I was using it. Um, so with, for someone on a budget, that was great. Now, if you have a little bit of more money to spend, something that you can also use is osmosis. And I've also mentioned this a lot in my videos because osmosis really came in clutch for me and has benefited me so much over the course of my program. I first actually got introduced to osmosis when I was going through patho and, and pharmacology um, because some only some of their videos are on YouTube. And so I would watch the ones that were there, but I kept wanting more. They didn't have it for every topic. And I was like, dang, these videos are really good. So it was around that point that I was like, I think I need to actually invest in osmosis. And I'm so glad that I did. Osmosis not only has the patho aspect of like pretty much every patho subject that you want or really need as a nurse practitioner is on there, as well as pharmacology. It really breaks down um, like side effects, like pharmaco uh, dynamics and kinetics. Like it breaks down all of that for you. And then there's also videos that talk about like the clinical application of the medications. So it kind of all ties it together. Um, and it was extremely thorough. And as someone who's a visual learner, it helped me a lot. Um, so it's a good amount of money. I think it was like at least, it was like between 150 and $200, I think, um, for I think maybe a year. I'm not sure, but it was a little bit more on the expensive side, but that's one of the purchases in NP school that I definitely have not regretted because I'm still using osmosis today. Now, back to kind of the more budget friendly side, there's also something called speed pharmacology, which was also extremely helpful to me. Um, at the time that was free on YouTube as well. Um, and they had a lot of the same things as osmosis in terms of the pharmacology and just breaking that down because I'm just not someone <laughs> like, I just memorizing medications did not come naturally to me whatsoever and knowing all these side effects and it, it was really in depth for me but speed pharmacology really broke it down and I had a lot of visual cues to kind of help me take what I was reading and kind of um, understand it in a different way. All right and then something else that helped me specifically in advanced pharmacology um, in within the settings of group studying but also individually as well were some medication tables. Um, and I can show you guys kind of a, one that I made using a Word document. Usually I actually would write these out by hand um, because that would help me to remember it better, actually handwriting it. But this is just an example to show you how I would set up the medication table. Um, so I would just have like the name of the medication, what class it was in, indications, talking about the mechanism of action, the pharmacokinetics, any adverse effects, contraindications, drug interactions, and monitoring slash patient education. Um, and so these were these were topics that I found were commonly asked. Um, uh, they were like emphasized in the class and those were the main things that we were focused on. Um, so I, what I would do is make these tables and I would put different drug classes in different colors um, to help me because I'm such a visual person. Um, and then I would also go back and highlight like the key takeaways. If there was something that was said that's like, oh, like this is like a big thing about this drug. I would highlight it so that when I'm reviewing, I can make it kind of an easy standout thing instead of having to like reread like every every word of the of the um, table over and over again. But like I said, I would handwrite these. But, you know, Honestly, looking back, I probably should have been typing these into a computer because it'd be easier now as I'm getting towards the end of the program to really look at the medications. So I would suggest for you guys, if you're able to make um, a digital version of this, it's probably for the best um, because you'll probably thank yourself later. Now, granted, there's micromedics and stuff going forward. So I mean, I'm not too sad about it, but it could have been helpful to me now. So I hope this table kind of helped you guys a little bit with 
thinking about some things that you should probably focus on. If you guys do do the medication um, table route, that is something, like I said, you can share it with your study group, maybe assign different medications to different people per week, and you can all work together to fill it in. Um, but I would say something with pharmacology that's really important, as well as patho too, is because there's so much memorization that goes into it, try to break it up and try to do a little bit each day. I, I wouldn't suggest cramming for these kind of tests because it, it's just too much information. Um, especially pharmacology for me, I really needed to just look at a, like a few meds each day and just be reviewing maybe maybe an hour each day. But even if it had been 30 minutes, even if it's 30 minutes for you, like I think that's fine. But I just, I'm not someone who can sit down for 12 hours and just do rote memorization. Um, everything just ends up getting jumbled. So if you can break it up and just like look at it a little bit each day, I think that's really going to help. All right, guys, so that's all I have for you with Advanced Patho and Advanced Farm. I know that it's rough. Just hang in there, guys. You know, you will get through the semester. Um, I don't know anyone who actually who failed out because of those classes. It's just something that was like very stressful and you kind of have to push through if it doesn't come naturally to you. Now, I know some of you guys out there are probably looking at me like, wow, I thought farm was so easy because I know there's some people out there Guys, farm was hard. Farm was hard. Patho was moderate for me, but I know patho is just not some people's jam. So give yourself some grace. Um, find a study group. Find people that you can take this journey with. Um, and if you need tutoring, see if your school has a tutoring program as well. Don't be afraid to reach out to your professors early if you're not understanding or if you're starting to feel like you might not pass. Okay? All right, make sure you give this video a like, subscribe, hit that notification button, that little bell, um, and comment below, how did you survive patho? How did you survive farm? Because I'm curious how other people <laughs> managed through. Did you just memorize everything because you have like a photographic memory? I don't know, because that's, that's definitely not me. But <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Um, I hope that you guys are having a great semester. All right, peace.